Hey guys, thank you so much. We finally made it up to a full year of printed issues here at the zine. Uh, the first four we put out were under our former name, the Metal Web Zine, and then everything we put out since August has been under the new moniker, Wretched Sound. So I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the, uh, the three issues that we've released this year. Uh, starting with January, of course, this is the big one, the guide issue. Uh, you've heard me talk about this a few times. That one includes uh, 50 of my favorite New York State bands, and that one was also distributed nationally. Uh, most recently, a place called Third Coast Vinyl in Michigan uh, got their hands on it. We posted about that recently. Uh, you can find it at Music Matters. A um, few places in Southern California, uh, the Amoeba in West Hollywood has it. The Amoeba in uh, San Francisco has it. Um, just um, a number of shops uh, that we've been posting about over the past month, uh, record stores around the continental U.S. have it. So it's really cool to finally have that level of distribution. Uh, we won't do that for every issue, uh, but we'll do it every six months or so when we do a guide issue, which is basically when I put together uh, 50 ads for 50 bands that I handpick. And uh, that's just a promotional tool. But for the most part, we like to keep it local in uh, western New York and central New York and the southern tier and uh, I don't know, I guess I could have just said upstate New York. Yeah, we like to keep it an upstate New York thing and really only distribute it uh, close to home uh, in record stores in the Buffalo and Rochester area. So uh, that's getting into February. So I made this cute little guy for February. And uh, yeah, this is a cool thing because um, uh, I was jokingly calling it the heartbreak issue because you know there are a number of bands like in this area that have just been blowing off for years not intentionally but just you know just kind of uh putting uh on the back burner and kind of never going back for them so uh this gave me an opportunity to do that i wanted to set aside an issue specifically for bands that i've been you know saying yeah i'll get to you i'll get to you and then i i never fucking do it so uh, yeah, Fitting Revenge, a uh, metalcore band from Rochester, uh, they just got the new lineup together. Uh, they're going to be opening Dark Tranquility at Montage on March 7th, so that's going to be really cool for them. And uh, took the opportunity to also uh, interview the Spit Nickel guys who are also on that Dark Tranquility show, and they do like an old school like Motorhead type thing. Uh, a band from uh, Endicott is uh, called Course of Extinction uh, that I have in here. They are a brutal death metal band that I saw years ago at... Um, at uh, Finger Lakes Metal Fest uh, out in Oxford, and I uh, they, they just totally blew me away, and I've been meaning to write them up for, for since then, since like May of 2019, I just did it now, so uh, so yeah, and then of course, um, I never really uh, dive into hardcore, but uh, now that we have Billy Page on board, like contributing with us, like Billy does a lot of the hardcore stuff, and uh, one of the bands that uh, that she wrote up for the February issue is Juggernaut, uh, one of Mike Jeffers' many bands. So uh, it was cool to finally get a hardcore review in one of these zines. And uh, this is my friend Ian Mahalski, and he uh, he and I went to high school together uh, twenty plus years ago. And uh, he's always been a performer. You know, he's always been a, a singer, songwriter. Uh, I know he dabbles with a few instruments, uh, but more than anything, he's uh, he's a, he's a stage performer. He belongs on Broadway. He's just eccentric and you know just super super animated and just uh, a huge vocal range. Whether he's singing or acting, like he's just a very versatile actor as well. So yeah, really cool to finally you know totally totally break away from metal and uh, you know get somebody who who performs like show tunes you know big band stuff stuff like that you know so that was a really cool thing to do for february um and you know there are a couple other things in here that are are certainly worthy of praise uh we have a new contributor another new contributor her name is aurora she is from rochester but she's currently going to school in north carolina i don't remember what she's going to school for because i'm a bad friend but uh she did two uh cool reviews two album reviews for us in this february issue uh one is uh, for an album called uh, Spirit Permeance by Kerr, and that's uh, an atmospheric black metal thing. It's a uh, one-person band, I believe. And uh, the other one is uh, for a band called, Ho uh, oh, I'm sorry, a band from Hopewell, uh, New York, called Vision Serpent, and the album is called Call of the Void. And uh, they have, um, it's weird, like, and, and, and not to, like, really just dive into shit talking about Phil Anselmo out of nowhere, but, uh, they, they have a lot of, like, old-school Pantera qualities to their music, but the vocals are just so 
much better and so much more aggressive and consistent and just kind of less uh, less arrogant sounding, I guess. Like they're just a really wholesome sounding band, and they cover a lot of ground, so a lot of a lot of different styles of metal. So they're just a fun band to listen to. Uh, Drew Celestino, he's been doing like Metallica show reviews for us for a couple years now, and Metallica album reviews. Um, the last time he and I got together for something, it was when we both saw S and M two in San Francisco in 2019. We did a podcast episode about it, but uh, he uh, went to the. I wasn't able to attend, unfortunately, but he went to the uh, 40th anniversary weekend um, in December, and he wrote that up for us. So that was really cool uh, to get that in our February issue. And, uh, yeah, Billy Page did that, uh, review of the new Juggernaut album, uh, Hollow Black, and she also reviewed Thorns, the new Tony Martin album, which I didn't even know about until it was released, but Billy and I had just done, like, that whole Black Sabbath podcast, and we talked about Tony Martin a bunch, so I had no idea Tony Martin had a new album, but the new album is Thorns, and it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I think we covered everything else in this February issue. And now this is the big one, this is the one that got us to, to one year of printed issues, this is the seven-year anniversary issue. So I made the cover look like a stupid little, like, Lucky Sevens lottery ticket, and in place of winning numbers, I did an individual from each band that I wanted to feature. So I handpicked seven bands for the seven-year anniversary issue that I feel have backed me the hardest, especially during the pandemic. Like, people have been really supportive of the publication and, like, sharing stuff and getting people behind us. And, like, you know, not it's it's not about people buying copies, but, you know, buying up copies, encouraging others to do so, and just supporting the publication. Like, everything that you guys do helps me continue to do this, and these are the seven bands that I feel have been behind the scene uh, the most and backed the printed issues the hardest since I started doing them. So it's Hell Ever After. Hell Ever After is the uh, the rock opera from Buffalo. If I talk about a bunch, uh, Inertia is a Buffalo tech death band. Gates of Paradox is a Rochester power metal band. Anthropic is a Buffalo grind band. Grizzly Run is a Buffalo metalcore band. Deluded is a Rochester metalcore metalcore band. And uh, Prepare for the Mind Scan. Uh, they're super cool. They are a Buffalo grindcore band, and they have been around since probably not many people realize this, but Prepare for the Mind Scan's been around since like 2008, 2009. So it was really cool to get, uh, you know, do special features. Like these are these are bands that like I, I feature a bunch, like on the website and in the zines, the printed zines. But I wanted to, uh, you know, do special write-ups on them and have some more exclusive content in, in an anniversary issue just to show my appreciation for like, their undying support. So, um, yeah, it's been a really, really uh, intense emotional roller coaster for me. Like, and I know it has been for all of us since uh, COVID started, but one of the many things that I have going on in my life that has helped me get through it is doing these printed magazines. So, 2022 is a banger so far. It's off to a great start. Thank you all for your support. I have to get out of here for about a month to work on something completely outside my wheelhouse, unrelated to music, unrelated to science fiction, just something totally new that I'm working on uh, with some people uh, on the West Coast. I'm going to be working on that for about a month, and then when I get back uh, uh, from that project, uh, we'll have a strong April issue of Wretched Sound for you guys. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.